welcome back everybody to another episode of super mario rpg previously we started off bowser's castle or bowser's keeping this game and we started off or we started off doing number one on the six out of the door today we're actually going to be doing the majority or all of these because i want to show what's behind all these doors and the premise of why i'm doing all of them is because um they give you each of them when you complete them they give you a specific item and you can only do four out of six meaning you're gonna always miss two and i'm always gonna restart every two to show each two and after the sixth one i will completely restart everything cut and then go back to where we were so i can show you what i got all right so let's do this first things first we, as stated before, we previously started door number one, which gives us uh, three different like quizzes to do. Though we did this previously, I still want to uh, press A to see how many coins there are, and to give it like a better explanation as like um, as uh, what do you call it? Like the Nim game. Six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then 21 is done. Also from the previous episode, I actually found in the same speedrunning website where I got most of my uh, info about <clears throat> the temp hits. Oh, my controller fell. They actually do have a, uh, a one solution at least for for uh, for uh, what do you call it? The maze, or the maze, the uh, the ball solitaire. So when we get in there and the uh, doors and they bleh, bleh. once like the 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 ball disappears, I will show what the uh, the solution is. But a little thing to keep an, an eye on so you can remember how to do it. Keep it all on the screen. So here you go. On screen should be like an arrangement of numbers ranging from 1 to 12 or 1 to 15. This tells you or 1 to 16. This tells you um, what to uh, what balls to push in what order so you can actually complete it pretty cool once you actually figure once you see the numbers and then you can plan out your moves write down a piece of paper and see if you can write out your moves to um understand it so 10 4 12 13 1 3 Seven, fifteen, zero, four, thirteen up, five, eleven, and three. Um, I was saying them in, in like 0 to 15. You can actually just have it in 1 to 16. Just if you want to translate it to 1 to 16, just add 1 to what I was doing. But yeah. Once we're done with the um, with all the challenges in the room, we pop up and we get a treasure. Give me one of six items. You got a rock candy. One of the kind of one of the worst ones, in my opinion. It's a good item to um see what to do what to grab or one of like the best like items to do damage but in my opinion is like one of the worst ones other than coins but door one's done now we can do two which is a gauntlet every enemy or not every enemy we're just gonna be bombarded by a group of enemies and we just have to um beat each of the groups to progress forward and this is the most straightforward one of the uh of the challenges and if anything 
you should you should have already seen some of the uh monsters already from the enemy cards and uh what do you call it i'm just gonna put basically on the sidebar just basically round one sprite of the enemy for what we do and honestly one thing i want to figure out and i think i i, I think this should be true that i think every time you play this game the item placement for the rewards for these doors and i think the challenges are all randomized um it should be on screen for if that's true or not but honestly i feel like every time i've played this game i've always gotten different i've gotten like a different um item for what to do three down so we got round two versus two of these super jump on the uh tub of troopa damn not even enough that sucks also one thing i need to like sit down and do though not for like editing wise or anything stupid it's more in a sense like i need to sit down and fiddle around fiddle around with my tv settings because I don't know how much input lag uh, my TV is giving to me for uh, for recording, but uh, other than that, I think it's like three or four fights per for these things. And honestly, there are some enemies you can fight early on. From yeah, there are some enemies you can fight early on. From like. Early on in Bowser's Key before you fight them like later in the game. Or we could just say these are old enemies. And it's just funny to see that. God damn it, Peach, you didn't kill the Orbison. Recover. The thing I know like the big boo, I think that's like Carol Sewer's uh enemy. So Fourth one, we get a sling guy. And it's six or five of them. Honestly, the, though these fights are pretty funny, you get to do them. Um, always keep an eye on your FP because um, you will run out. And if you run out while trying to do these, it's a bad idea. Or it's a pretty terrible position to be in. 100 coins, though. That's not something to see that. Go into this door, and we get more. Next up is a Chewy. Chewies and Shyaways. Honestly, from what I think, and from what I think is that every time you do these fights, it's always with the strongest enemy variations of uh, enemies. So like it would be, for the Goombas would be the Goombas, for the Troopas, or for the Sky Troopas would be the Malakoopas and the Tubba Troopas. Which would make sense why the big boo would only be the strongest one for the boo. Orbisons would be the strongest for the orb users and vice versa. Other than that, just have fun and see if you can find the uh, the palette swap of the character you've seen before. Also, from what you've been seeing, every fight has been or every like group of fights we've been getting into, the person who's been summoning the fights is a red magic Koopa. and uh there is some story significance to why there's a red magic Koopa here i'm not gonna say it because like no joke like after this whole six door sh uh shenanigans um it will be explained but other than that you guys get to for anyone who has not played this game you guys get to figure out uh what that what that reasoning is also, one other thing, just about recording wise and all that, is that every time I record with my Elgato, I need to like figure out how to lower the uh, the screen, like the brightness and stuff like that, because the the uh, black bars look a little grayish to me, or like a little high gray. 
or light gray, like a little, yeah, like a little like dark gray and then a black. But yeah, right now, from what I've been doing, was literally trying to figure out um each of these doors and how to actually sit down and do this in recording because. I said in the I said in the beginning, there's only six doors you can do, and you can only do four, so you have to sit down and figure out which ones you want to do. And back in the original SNES version, other than just resetting the game, uh, you don't know which what shit like what's behind which door. Ooh, lucky on the glum. Okay, the creeper. And as you've seen, we actually have a new enemy in the mix. A glum reaper. So uh, yeah, as I stayed, or as I said, you will get like uh, high level enemies in here if you had never seen them. Oh, already? Let's see where we can go. Was on the right. We know this one. Last room. It's always three rooms then. Three rooms of four, meaning twelve fights. Time for good old pyro spheres again. And also, like, I always find it funny though that pyro spheres are red, but like, there's two red sprites and one unused green sprite. Also, from like what I've been doing with editing wise, is that I'm actually at. I've already. Exported up to part 22 Because yes, I Already have like three I already have like this full week's worth of videos of the day of the recording like already Uploaded but I need to sit down and Record the rest because I feel like I'm Four to five episodes left of the uh, record of the game And Hopefully I could actually uh, finish the game in two two sittings If I can then I can and I gotta do it for a third, but I'm surprised I'm almost done with recording for this game But I mean when I'm done with this game, I have to actually sit down and Think of think of one for Like a game like paper Mario or another RPG if I ever want to do these um like these enemy cards again because for this game I can actually just move the screen to the side and uh, and just figure out from there but for games that actually take the entire screen I feel like I have to make like a custom screen for the enemy card and leave the video there it'd be cool but it'd be awkward to do Shamans. Ooh, that's a lot of shamans. They have a lot of uh They have a lot of magic defense meaning you gotta kill them one by one. Unless you have Bowser. Flamestone. I'd be I'd be very happy if they go for Peach with their uh, magics because the lazy shell always puts magic at a zero. All right, I think yeah, I think most times uh, if they get hit with a magic attack, it puts them at a uh, at zero damage to be taken. Yeah, first time I see it um, attack normally. So I think after this shaman fight would be the last of the the first. Uh, I want to say the pit trial, but no, just the challenge or like the battle challenge. Six hundred and twelve damage. God damn, Marty. Last shaman with diamond saw. And then I get to reset after this to see where we can go. Ugh. So let's see what we get after door number two. I'm not going to double our experience. I want to see what's behind door number two. Star gun. The star gun is a weapon for Gino. And this is what I mean by rock candy is one of the, just the worst ones in my opinion. The star gun is Gino's ultimate weapon. And I mean it by his ultimate weapon. 
four, no, no, five out of the six, um, or one out of the six treasures you get is always a rock candy. While the other five are the ultimate weapons for the main cast. And if you have not gotten the lazy shell or the frying pan, this is probably the only way you can actually get those uh, final weapons because you can't buy them. You only get them through uh, these trials, which is why I'm going to be using this save state function to keep gr to keep to show you what they are. And once we're done, I will sit down and do the rest. So door number three, you got 10 tries to uh, do this. Fright bomb. Bruh. Every time you jump and they jump, they, uh, they show the path and each of these, uh, bombs can give you something. And they're really good items. Royal syrups, ice bombs and shit like that. And another rock candy. So yeah, if you really just want to, uh, if you really want to, uh, see what to do, let's see what to do. If you want to see what you can actually grab, you can just do it. Also, this platforming section, every time you jump, the platform stop, meaning you got an actual chance to sit down, plan your moves and do this. And time for the last one, which is a very funny reference from, uh, from like the original, uh, or from the original arcade games. Have any of you guys actually played Donkey Kong Arcade? Cause I used to, I grew up around the arcade era. And as you can see, the gorilla is actually there. Bruh. Burr. So yeah, just basically get to the top, avoid the barrels, and avoid the change-ups of the barrels falling down, and you'll be fine. Two, three, four, five. There we go. Get to the top, the gorilla leaves, and then we get item number three. Sugar, or sugar slap, super slap, Peach's ultimate weapon. But if you actually go grab the frying pan, why would you want to get the super slap? Door number four. More, more quizzes. Hey, 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 it's me, the quiz master. And it's quiz time. Any explanation? Sure. I'll give you 12 questions. Count them, 12. If you're right, the block you're standing on will move up one. But if you blow it, you'll go down. You'll go down two. You have five seconds. If you can't answer, you move down one. Reach the eighth step within 12 questions and you won. Got it? Man getting his man picture taken. Hates what? Getting his picture taken. What words does Shy Away use when he sings? La di da. How many underlings does Croco have? Three. Who is the famous sculptor in Nimbus Land? Garo. What is the password in the sunken ship? Pearls. Where was the first star piece found? Mushroom Kingdom. What's the color of the end of Dodo's beak? Red. What does the red essence do? Makes you sleepy, gives you strength, releases back pain, gives you strength. So yeah, basically, there's a, there is a plethora of questions you can get from this, and I will put in the description for the speedrunning guide where they actually put every single question and probably another website as well that also has every single question. So you can double check your answer and just make a guide for yourself. Every single question, it just questions you about stuff in the game. So you have to be very attentive. <laughs> Let's see how well you can count. Give you 10 seconds, 10. Tell me the number of barrels in the room. <laughs> Close your eyes for a sec. <laughs> you ready? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Minimum would be or maximum would be fourteen if I'm counting each of the barrels. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I'm doing guessing fourteen. Correct, but <laughs> this is just a warm up. Next. Cut the barrels and you'll be fine. Now you'll see if you can really count. You got 20 seconds. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 36. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 40. 41. I think it would be 41. Fuck. All right, let's get, let's get on here. There was three on the bottom and five. Oh, you need to actually answer. That's cool. But yeah, four, I think four on the bottom. Four on the bottom, two, make it eight. Hmm. But. All right, so let's get to do more questions. But anyway, you actually get more questions to see what you can do. Hopefully I can actually count again. What does the red essence do? He's strength. The other which is what? A boss, a new breed of cattle, special attack. He's a boss. Boosters in what generation? The eighth. Who is the famous composer at Tapo Pond? Todovsky. Who is the leader of the Axum Rangers? Red. Who helped you up the cliff at Land's End? Sky Troopers, Line Troopers, Sky Troopers. What's the chef's name at Marymore? Torde. Who is the famous sculptor in Nimbus Land? Garo. How long does a couple inside the chapel have been waiting for the wedding? 30 minutes. How many legs does Wiggler have? Damn. What does what does uh the words that Shyway use? La di da. What's the third star piece found? Moleville. Basically, you don't you can only suffer two wrong questions and you will fuck up. There's 12 questions, you need to get up to eight. You have to actually answer eight. If you fuck up two, you can still make it, but fuck up more than that and you fucked. Fuck, I hit the button. I hit the button. What's the funny name of the boss of the second ship? Uh, Jonathan Jones. Where was the first star piece found? Mushroom Kingdom. What was the password in the second ship? Pearls. The man getting his picture taken gets heading what? His picture taken. How long does a couple in the chapel been waiting for their wedding? 30 minutes. What the words does the shadow use when he sings? La di da. How many legs does Wiggler have? Damn, it's six. What color is the Anadoto's beak? Red. Who is the famous composer in uh, Chapel Pond? The boy at the end, much kingdom was playing with what? A Game Boy. Who is the ultimate enemy in this adventure? Smithy. Yes, actually, I did not talk to that guy in Mushroom Kingdom, but he is playing on a Game Boy. When we're done with this adventure, we will actually show what that means. All right, let's see if we can count barrels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Good old thirteen barrels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So, next one. And I actually should look at the screen, but I'm here. I'm looking at my phone. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127, now something completely different. <laughs> Boo, Goo, Bones, and Kip competed in a triathlon. The triathlon included swimming, cycling, and a marathon. It's up to you to guess which person, which person, or which place each person came in. Listen well, you're gonna hear the only story once. I out I outrode Goo on my bike, and Goo was never able to pass me. I fell into fourth place during the bike race, but finally ended up in the same place I did in the swimming event. So he was fourth in swimming. I came in third for swimming. I kept, I placed the same in swimming and cycling events, but the two others beat me in the marathon. Yeah, that's pretty much it. 
So, um, Boo says that he outrode Goomba and kept the same position. And Bone said he stayed in, uh, he came in third for swimming. The other two beat me in the marathon. Yeah, he plays in the same events, swimming and cycling, but the others, but two others beat him in the marathon, meaning if he stayed in first, he would go down to third. If he was in second, he'd go down to last. But Goomba said he was in last during his bike race, ended up in the same place in a swimming event. And that means if he came only in third for swimming and he all rolled go boo and never got past, that would mean he's last, he's third. Yeah, he would be last, he would be third, second, and first. But that wouldn't be the case. Uh, no, that would mean Kip would be third third if he was or he would be last if these two people passed him or he would you know he would be third if two people passed him this is hard and this is why this one just sucks well i'm gonna go with my butt i'll go talk to him in order and they came and return here so I'm just going to say, um, came in number one, you came in number two, you came in number three, you came in number four, and I got it wrong. Boo goo kip bones. Said, sucks. Legit, we are like at time, I think. So, uh, I'm gonna keep going with this episode until we actually finish this because it's just gonna suck, and I don't want to put this on a second episode to do it. So, it's gonna be a long one, but uh, let's have some fun. Who's the ultimate enemy in the adventure? Smithy, the Goombas. How many legs does Wiggler have? Apparently, it's six. How many? How long, it, how long have they been waiting? 30 minutes. What was Mal asked to get for Frog Fuchsia's? A cricket pie. What was the third star piece on? Moleville. What was the full name of the boss of the second ship? Jesse James Jones. My is Dinah's what? Big sister. There it is. What does Culex, Jinx, and Goomba have in common? They all lived in, in Monster Town. What is the fourth selection on the menu screen? Yes, this shit. Uh, equip. What was the first star piece found? Mushroom Kingdom. Who helped you on the cl cliff's end? Sky Troopers. Yes, they get that petty. Yo, what's the fourth options in the menu? Because that sounds like a fun time. All right, so let's see what our first one's gonna be. What's it? Six, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 14? All right, time for the next one. Twelve, twenty-four, twenty-five, thirty-six, seven, eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-four, one, forty-two, forty-three, forty, forty-five, forty-five, forty-five barrels in this one. Apparently, I still hate it that you actually have to solve the uh, the thing. Forty-five. Hmm. Time for this thing again. Try to do swimming, cycling, and a marathon. So let's see what we can do. Goomba. I came in third for swimming. I outrode Boom on my bike, and Boo was ever able to pass me. I placed the same in swimming event and cycling event, but the other two beat me in the marathon. 
I fell into fourth place during the bike race, but finally ended up in the same place I did in the swimming event. Which is very, very funny to do. All right. Let me see here again. You came in third for swimming. You were placed in the same as swimming and cycling there to beat you. And you were what? I outrode Boo on my bike and Boo was neighbor to pass me. So I think it's um uh, Bones Boo Kip and Goomba. Let's see if I get it wrong again. Nope. Honestly, when I did, I actually looked up on the guide for what I have for this game for the speedrunners. Apparently, three of them are random. It's always the random one. The always the ones that's always the same is Boo, Goo, Bones, and Kip are all random, so they change their their stories. And what we get from here is another rock candy. These things are always random. Which is fucking beautiful to see. Which... Great! So you always gotta deal with RNG. So yeah. Five out of six are weapons. I'm just gonna show you what the or every single door is. And hopefully... I'll just get the weapons I want. Because if anything, the one for... For Mario and... Uh, The one for Mario and Peach are not necessarily good weapons. They got the lazy shield in the frying pan. Door number five is basically another another fight section. Always fun to do. So when we're doing these three rooms of 12 or these three rooms of four, I'm just going to sit down and just talk whatever that comes to my mind. So, uh, as of today's recording, um, what I actually want to do is that I've been actually watching a lot of uh, Among Us videos from Tom, from uh, Tom Fox, and if anything, some of the videos I've watched from him are the uh, the um, the Among Us videos with the proximity chat and. I was actually in the mood to sit down and see if I can actually figure out what mods they're using to uh, to try it with my friends. And if I actually do get it to set up and we do actually plan a day where we want to sit down and actually try Among Us with proximity chat, I might record it Qu uh, like quote unquote on might. I don't know. Um, it's not that Among Us is stale, it's more like, in a way, Among Us is... It gets repetitive after a while, and the one mod I also I also want to try, which is like, basically Among Us, but with the... The things of Town of Salem. Are gonna be very fun to use, but I don't think anyone wants to play Among Us with multiple roles. Especially since, like, Among Us is two roles, of uh, uh, like among or of, of a crewmate and imposter. So if anything, the more roles you add, the harder not not the harder is gonna be, but more in the way of it's harder to remember all the roles in it. Also, a funny thing about these uh these rooms is that there's actually a uh, a chest enemy in one of these rooms. Also, the big Bertha. The big Bertha. And the uh, other blaster from Booster's Tower use the same sprite. It's very funny that they use the same sprites. So, other than that, um, also by this week's of recording, Death Throat of Canada might get its update tomorrow, the 25th, and I am super excited to sit down and see what the update's all about. 
because of um yeah because of like i just want to sit down and play the game again i love the throat of canada and every update that comes out i always get a chance to sit down and see what they added because they always add more customization options they add probably like more classes because last time i played it there were more like roles in the game or roles for the game more like traits in the game that i love and i think one of them i always i'm trying to unlock right now is the uh, fast learner because fast learner you learn pretty fast uh different skills so you get two points into a uh into a trait instead of the usual one from like random skill checks or surviving um the horde and all that where you get a random skill but as soon as you get up to a certain threshold it just uh goes back to one and it's very fun another thing that i've actually gotten to do with it is that i actually one of the uh, one of the um things i changed for one of the uh characters i made was that they hated it when i called them or when we called them an oblivious character because i didn't make it i asked the uh the people in a call to describe them to me so we can make them because by the time i was making their character they weren't even in the call to give me their two cents so they would just say joe put them oblivious and then explore and when i did show them Yeah, when they did like show up for me to play it, they got a little sad and uh, yeah, they got a little sad when I put them as oblivious and they were saying, why am I oblivious? And the, the, everyone in the call explained it to them. But yeah, we changed the oblivious one to anime fan. And I regret putting them into anime fan. I like, I like, the, I like, I don't mind the anime fan. It's not like it's a bad class. You get a very, very powerful, um, a very powerful weapon. Like the katana that they keep is their own class specific weapon and they don't drop that on death. And it's really good. But once they get to their thing, it's just going to be funny. And I uh, get it. Get it and the chain Kong again. So yeah. I'm just hoping that uh, the console version for the Throat of Canada comes out this week. Because going through Mad Cat, or yeah, Mad Cat's a, or Rocket Mad Cat's, Rocket Cat's a Twitter account, they said that uh, the original update is going to be on the 25th ios is getting theirs yes there's a mobile version for uh death road canada there's a mobile version for it the mobile version is getting their update on the 27th meaning the uh either the the tw or like the 28th or the 30th or even the 26th if they want they can put out the update for console and then i might be able to sit down on a on a night yeah on a night and just um Just record. I love the Throat of Canada. It's one of the best, one of the good games I always love to play with friends. And if anything, it's a really good stream game because you could just ask the chat for help. And if anything, it really does help out with the uh, the poll thing on Twitch and on YouTube, where you can like make up a poll and see what you can do. And if anything. Any chat interaction you can do. Any yeah, any chat interaction is a good interaction. And if hell, if anything, if you have if you have a good set of friends who are on a call to play the game, they can just make the experience even more stupider. Toast still reaches level 24. We're always getting the same level ups. They usually like don't level up unless you're going to the next area. So like if you if anything is behind these uh these things, you just have to Oh wait, all oh, great. 
Fuck it, I'm, I'm doing Geno World on the Pulsars because fuck them. Damn it, I missed. <laughs> it's like fucking missed, Sag. Good old Lucky, though. All right, so what other thing can I say? Um, I actually got a steelbook for both, um, for both Sparks of Hope and Persona 5 Royal. And I've been playing Sparks of Hope so far. And my premise of the game, or like my opinion on the game so far, as someone who's actually played the original, I like Sparks of Hope more. Sparks of Hope is a very, very cool game, very fun game. And I would recommend, like, if anyone wants to play the game, I would recommend the first one, first and foremost, because the first one's very fun. It's, you get to understand the, the experience of the game. But if you um, want to just play the game normally, then you could just uh, do it. Here is a. Actually, I was not gonna put any um any like enemy cards into this for any new enemies we might see, but the Chester is a unique one. He's only I think found in the uh, the the pit, like in the challenge trials. So that's the only one I'm gonna put up for him and the Bahamut that just came out. And if anything, no, no more. Uh, no more like treasure chest enemies. 498. Good old Dargan. What are you gonna do? Sandstorm. Uh, good to know that they do that. There you go. Also, one other thing I've been seeing so far is that I want to try out a new mic. But I need to actually get a fucking paycheck from my for my part time to buy it. And like honestly, though I do like this mic I have, I want to see what a, like what the difference between this and a DXLR mic is because that is the other mic I want to grab. Because Elgato is actually making a DXLR mic, or they made a DXLR mic, then they're selling it, and I want to try it out, see it, see it, and all that. I feel like, if anything, I might enjoy it more because low voice and, or like my low voice and how I usually speak and all that and how far away my mic is. I would rather enjoy that. Drill Claw, Bowser's ultimate weapon. Time for the last door. And then after door number six, we're ending up the episode. So I won't show you where I'm going, but I am going to be doing these things off screen because we've been doing this for way too long. More platforming. And these ones don't stop for you. So, once you get to this part, you have to jump and get to the platform. It's gonna be fun. Uh, come on. Three. Four, five. Oh, there is something up there actually, but I'm not gonna go grab it. Wait, you, there's actually a bunch of bombs you can do here, and uh, don't run into them. If you run into the bombs, you'll be basically uh, up straight straight without a paddle. But if you want to get the items, you can, but just get to the end. You'll be fine. And if you remember that one puzzle, or that one puzzle, that one platform that Croco was trying to grab in a uh, row in Rose Way. No, not Rose Way. In Mushroom Way. We're literally using it again. I said it previously, you can try to grab all the items here because they're really good items fright bombs, ice bombs, rock candies, and shit like that. But that's only if you want to try and grab them. If you just want to get to the end or just nuisances. So, uh, yeah. Also, because if I'm doing my reset, why get the item that I'm just going to lose them again? All right. So at the end of here, 
fuck? Yeah, at the end of this, we get to see what we get at door number six. And we can actually see what we can do. There you go. Sonic symbol. Mallow's ultimate weapon. Just basically more symbols. So yeah. So with all six doors to show you what you can do. I am going to cut or I'm going to end off the episode here and do the doors off screen so we can actually get all of the uh, all of the uh, weapons. So thank you everybody for watching today's video. Next time on Mario RPG, when we come back from our our abrupt cut, we are going to be actually continuing the rest of the uh, the castle. And I know for a fact that I'm going to be re-recording the intro of the next episode because I'm going to be doing the one door I'm missing just to do it. So talk to y'all then and no jump this time because I'm just going to hit the save state button and I'm just going to put like Wii music or the Wii U like menu. So hope to see you again next episode.